First of all, uh, let me welcome you on today's Oral Tech Talks uh, webinar. Uh, I would really, I'm really happy to see all of you here. I'm happy to see uh, that we have a community who is interesting in the, uh, into who is uh, who knows how Oral uh, works, what kind of uh, technical detail, how it works in the bond, what kind of technical details, and what kind of technical configuration we can use for Oral and. Uh, today's topic is called Advanced Search with the Elasticsearch. Uh, so this tech talk will be about the uh, Advanced Search features in the Aura Commerce, uh, what kind of features we have there, how they implement it, how to use them, how to customize them, and in general, how you as a uh, application uh, user, application administrator or a developer uh, can work with all these uh, features. Uh, this webinar is worth attending uh, both for the administrators and for the developers because administrators can find here something useful for, the, uh, for them to understand how uh, the search features works and how to configure them, while the developers can obviously uh, see how these features work at the bonnet and um, understand how to customize them. So a couple of words about me. My name is uh, Yevhen Shishkin. I'm an uh, architecture advisor, project lead and technical trainer in Oro. I'm working with e-commerce already for more than 10 years and have quite a lot of experience in this area. Uh, but most importantly, in addition to all these activities, I'm also a search component lead. Search component lead means that I'm uh, working with all the search components and all the uh, search features in Aura Commerce and responsible for this, uh, for testing of these features, for implementing of these features, for explaining to the users how we work and in general to make sure that user will be happy with the search feature in Aura Commerce. So, uh, in case you're interesting, uh, here are my Twitter, uh, my GitHub, and my uh, personal portal. In case you're interesting, you can always go there and check for more information. Now, uh, the search itself. So let us start with understanding what is advanced search and how it is beneficial to the users. So most of the modern search engines like Google or Yahoo already use advanced search without explicitly telling you so. So uh, advanced search in the implementation of all these engines includes autocompletes, includes auto suggestions, uh, references to the pages if you have not found anything in your uh, result and in general, it's a pretty, pretty smooth and good user experience. Uh, so people who get used to uh, using Google, Yahoo, and other advanced search engine get used to all these features. And this is absolutely fine. The people uh, have to use the best and the people have to, uh, people may expect uh, to have this best kind of experience in every application that they use. What well, it means uh, for us as an or commerce administrator or commerce developers, it means that we have to provide this user experience uh, to satisfy uh, users to provide uh, the best we could. So the smooth has to be search, uh, this um, behavior has to be smooth, uh, the search uh, have to return the valid results, it has to rate errors and typos, uh, you, it has to understand user preferences, how the search has to work, what kind of uh, results the user respects, uh, what are the most relevant results, what are the least relevant results, obviously to arrange them and show the most relevant results at the top, and many, many, many other features. So. Let me remind you one more time of uh, the responsibility of the administrator or developer to provide all these features to the user. Well, next question you may ask is how to do that. Uh, well, in Aura, uh, in especially in the enterprise version of the Aura, uh, we are offering uh, such a tool as an Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an external, uh, external I mean third party uh, search engine based on Lucene engine. Uh, Elasticsearch is technically a NoSQL database management system that allows you to store information, uh, search for the information, manage information, uh, manage information itself, manage information structure, manage how you're going to access it, search it, etc. In addition to all these things, Elasticsearch also offers extensive search capabilities. By extensive search capabilities, I mean lots of the features that can uh, customize the way the search work uh, to do so-called fine-tuning of the search. Um, by fine-tuning, I mean uh, doing minor adjustments here and there to have the best user experience and have the best performance 
Elasticsearch also supports clusters, which makes it perfect for the um, big instances and high performance instances where you need to handle lots of data and quite quickly. And also Elasticsearch offers multiple clients, clients for the Java language, clients for the PHP language, C Sharp, Python, and so on. Uh, most interesting for us is the official, the PHP, because Oracle uh, is rooting on the PHP and because Elasticsearch has that kind of client, uh, or a commerce application with this client in order to interact with the Elasticsearch. If you're familiar with this client, it makes your life a bit more easier, a little bit easier when you're going to work with uh, the Aura Commerce and Elasticsearch in the Aura Commerce. What kind of features Elasticsearch is used for in the Aura Commerce? Well, there are quite a lot of the features. Um, you can use relevance boost in order to work, in order to boost, in order to like sort products in the proper way. Uh, you can use synonyms in order to show products or show documents that does not include the required word or just include for another abbreviation or a synonym for it. Elasticsearch uh, includes error tolerance, which means that you can you can allow users to make typos or mistakes uh, in their phrase and still show some kind of valuable result. We have a search fine tuning capabilities, we have autocomplete, faceted search, and of course, you as a developer can customize all of these features. All the features uh, that are listed here are available either as out of the box features or as an extension on the marketplace. In general, Aura Commerce has two indices, standard index or backend index and website or storefront index. Uh, both these indices stores different information. Backend index stores information required related to the backend. Mm, storefront index stores information related to the storefront. Some features that you can see in the list uh, covers both indices, some covers only one. Again, it really depends on the use case, it really depends on the feature. Uh, later on, when I'm going to explain these features and demonstrate how these features work, of course, I will uh, tell which index it relates to. And one more thing, because Elasticsearch is available only in the Enterprise Edition, most of the features I'm going, we're going to check uh, in the next couple of minutes will relate only to the Enterprise uh, features. However, if you're using Community Edition feature, uh, Community Edition application, you may try to implement most of the features through the ORM search engine as well. The first feature we're going to talk today is called the Relevance Boost or just Boost. What it means and how it works. Relevance Boost is uh, a special way to calculate the relevance or calculate the score for the search query. First of all, uh, this relevance boost works only for the full text search. Full text search is a special type of search that allows you to ignore order of words, ending, stop words, and this kind of other things. And then uh, the search index will calculate you the score, and the score means how close the required document to the search phrase a user entered in the user interface. So the closer it is, or the more relevant it is, the bigger the search score. And of course, the score by default is used for the sorting, so the most relevant results are at the top and least relevant results are at the bottom. One thing that you as administrator or developer can do with these uh, values, you can boost specific documents and change these values. For example, you want to promote some results in uh, the search results, and you, of course, have to increase this boost for this specific uh, document or this specific product, depending on where you're using. And this way, uh, promote or show this uh, result a bit higher than the other results. So there, is, there will be a better chance for user to check it and interact with this result. For example, see the product and buy this product. So let us see what kind of relevance boost uh, types we have in OR and what we can do with this thing. First of all, the implementation. And here we have a really, really simple uh, query that allows you to boost some specific uh, query to the Elasticsearch. And here you can see that we have two boosts. The first boost is the boost uh, by the uh, SQ analyzed field. The second boost by the SQ analyzed exact match field. 
Don't worry if you understand all these things. We are going to check them in just a moment. For now, you just need to know that every time uh, you are performing a query application already applies a boost, a boost, uh, two boosts. The first boost by 10 last fields with a factor five, which means that if you will find this product will be five times more important. Or, and with the 50, if you have the exact match for this product, it will have a boost of 50. So it will be 50 times more important comparing to all the other products. Now the implementation. Uh, the search fields in the search index are stored in so-called multi-fields structure. This structure tells us that every time we are storing an indexed field in the uh, Elasticsearch, we are storing it as a combination of four fields. The first field itself is the regular keyword field, which means just a plain string field, nothing really special about it. But then in addition to the field, we have three so-called subfields. These fields are actually used for the full text search and used to do all this magic with the boost we are talking about. The first field is called analyzed. This field is used for the regular full text search and partially for the boost. The second one is called analyzed exact match. This one is used to boost by the exact match. So let's say uh, you are looking for the some kind of uh, handheld flashlight. And if you will just enter world flash, uh, then it will be partial match. So exact match will not boost the product, but if you will enter flash light, then it will be boosted. We'll check uh, these results in a couple of minutes and I'll show you what you mean. And the third field called lowercase is not used for boosting, but it's used if you want to customize your search and instead of using full text search, use regular uh, substring search. This is, field, this is where you can use this field as well. Now the analyzers. So the, uh, when you are working with the Elasticsearch, every time you are performing a query, uh, Elasticsearch has to analyze that query. And by analyze, I mean it has to parse the word, it has to convert it in some kind of internal structure and use this structure to find appropriate documents. So all these things are uh, done by the analyzers. So analyzers here are used to um, perform this manipulation or perform this conversion. So we have two analyzers for the regular search, full text search analyzer, full text index analyzer. We have two analyzers uh, for the uh, exact match and uh, search and exact match index analyzers. In addition, we also have a lowercase analyzer that is used uh, when we want to perform a regular substring search here. Uh, finally, we have a Boolean query. Boolean query is a part of the Elasticsearch configuration, a part of the Elasticsearch query to be more specific, that is used to first check uh, whether the product matched our criteria and second to boost the specific part of this query or boost the results based on the some kind of condition. In order to do that, there are two separate areas in this query. The first one is called the must. Must area means that uh, all the products that must uh, that match this criteria or match uh, this query will be present in the result set. And the should is used to boost the product. So the more products will be found by the should, the bigger the factor, the higher the product will be in the result set. So all these things are good and nice, but of course you want to see the, uh, see the examples and this is exactly what we are going to do right now. So first is the boost by the exact match. Uh, boost by exact match is pretty easy to demonstrate. Let me open uh, the application. I'm going to use my local instance just for the demonstration. Uh, this one is easy to demonstrate in the storefront, but it works on the in the backend as well. So let's assume that we put here word hand. Uh, so here, first we have a product where we have exact match for the word hand, and then we have results where we have hand held. So exact match is higher than the partial match. Word hand is exact match is in the top and all other products where you have handheld 
and held and held and held are at the bottom. This way, user will find exactly what he show exactly what he wants, uh, see exactly what he wants at the very top, and then uh, the user may see similar or products that are close to what he is looking for. Uh, the next type of the uh, search is the uh, next type of the boost is the boost by the entity name. Boost by the entity name is used mostly in the management console, and this type of boost is used to show the documents with the right title at the top. So technically it's a boost by the entity title. Let me demonstrate you that. Uh, this one is works in the management console or in the backend. Now we need to go there and let's assume I want to search for the John. And here we have several results, actually 31 results. And if we will quickly check where the John is, uh, where this word John is uh, found here, we may see that we have uh, several results where the John is in the title. And then we can see additional results where the John is either in the description or it's partial match or it's the related entity field. So this is how the uh, boost by the entity name works. Uh, the next type of the boost is boost by the product attribute. So this type of boost is specific to the product entity. And uh, if you want to configure it, first you need to go to the management console, find the appropriate attribute and set boost for it. For example, I want to have a boost by the name. So this is the attribute I'm going to work with. And if I want to set a boost for it, I have to go here and set some value here, global search boost. What it gives me, why I want to do it. Uh, if I will set this type of boost, uh, then in the storefront, I will be able to search uh, for some product and see or the, have this product uh, boosted by the product name. So let me go to the storefront one more time. Uh, let's assume I want to search by the word cabinet. Have a look. Here we have several cabinets. And first, we are seeing all the um, products where the cabinet is a part of the title. This one, this one. And only then, we are seeing some products where cabinet only a part of the description. So this way application boosts the uh, application boosts the product based on the title. Same thing can be said by the SKU. So uh, if you have a SKU in the description of the product and a SKU in like a SKU field, uh, application first show you the product by the uh, product with the SKU you're looking for and only then all the related products. Next type of the boost is the boost by the customer history. So uh, it will be a little bit hard to demonstrate it, but I'll try. So let's assume uh, that you want to boost a product based on uh, how often it is viewed or how often it is bought. So here in the system configuration, uh, we have a special customer uh, preference boost section where we can enable boost by the product. And let's just say here we have several ways how we can do it. So the first part, customer preference boost, is used to boost the products based on how many times it's viewed, how many times it's added to the shopping list, and how many times uh, it is actually bought. So these factors are used to calculate uh, the custom boost for the um, Elasticsearch using one of the four following formulas. Uh, the formulas themselves are implemented uh, in the appropriate part builder I showed you uh, in a couple of minutes. And the second thing which you can use is the boost by the history of the products. So first of all, let me disable these two features. Let me quickly refresh the page. Again, 
search for the word cabinet. Here we're seeing that first we have three cabinets, one, two, three. Then we have the desk office, storage combination with door and some other products. However, now if I'm going to enable this feature, the order of products will be changed a bit because depending on how often product is bought, it now may go a little bit higher in the results. So I'll just copy this URL and run this query one more time. Here you go. Now pay attention. First of all, here, oh, before that, we were seeing four drawer light cabinet first, four drawer file cabinet, uh, wooden storage cabinet, and, and then all the other products. Now though, the first product is four drawer file cabinet, then we have wooden storage cabinet, then we have four drawer file cabinet, and only then we have all the other products. So here you can see that enabling this feature affects the result, and it does that because four drawer file cabinet has been bought several times, while all the other products haven't been bought yet. So this is the boost from the uh, purchase history, specifically the boost from the income generated by this product. Next question you may ask, and many customers actually ask, is how to use all these boosts together, because you have too many things, you have too many options, you don't know how to combine them together. Well, the answer here is simple. You have to try all these features one by one, check which of these features work and which don't for you, and keep only the ones that work. After that, you can do so-called fine-tuning. You can check how important is each of these boost types for your case or for your application or for your feature, and then either keep them working or disable them. Uh, in most cases, uh, the standard configuration labeled out of the box, which means you boost by exact match, boost by anything there and boost by product attributes, is pretty good for most of the applications. However, if you don't like that, you can customize the feature, you can enable some of the features or disable some of the features, add additional boost by some product attributes, etc. It really depends only on the use case you have in mind and the custom data you actually have there. What else you can do with the relevance boost? Well, there are tons of use cases that you can implement uh, if you want to make your application more user-friendly. The first one that springs immediately into mind is the boost by the customer segment preferences. So let's say you have many marketing segments or customer segments, and you want to boost different products for different people uh, in this uh, segments. For example, you are selling electronics and you have three customer segment groups. You have young customers up to 20 or 25 years. You have uh, middle-aged customers, 20 to 50 years, and you have older customers that are more of the older than the 50 years. And uh, for young customers, you may want to uh, promote some kind of mobile phones, especially uh, the most modern ones or some other electronics that are young people interested in. For the middle-aged people, you may promote the household appliances uh, like TVs, like uh, some kitchen appliances, etc. And for the older people, uh, you may promote some medical devices related to keeping people health and safe. The next uh, way how you can use Boost is to use the Martian cloning. So let's pick our previous case and instead of the menu telling what we want to boost or what we want to promote, we may let application to define it automatically. So every time uh, the segment is created, application will automatically analyze preference of all the people from all this segment from based on the purchase history, based on the products added to the shopping list and some other factors and automatically tell which attributes are most important for these people. So let's say you have customers from different regions on different countries and you don't know their preferences yet. So what you can do, you may ask application to analyze these preferences and then boost products that are most interesting for the people from this country. So let's say you have customers from Germany and from France and uh, you don't know the preference, but if you will use machine learning here, you may tell, an application may tell which types of products or which categories are most interesting, let's say for people from France, people from Germany, and boost product for the people from the appropriate country. The next type of the boost is the boost based on the price. 
here it really depends on the use case. Uh, for example, you may boost products that are um, that have price above average or have price below average or have price in some kind of range. And this kind of products will be always in the top while the other products will be at the bottom. Inventory boost is also a quite a common option. For example, you may boost products that are first in stock and second close to the customer's shipping address. This way, this product will be the most interesting for this customer because it will be delivered um, the fastest. Then, of course, you can move out of stock to products to the end of the list. And uh, if you have discontinued products, you may show them in the very bottom. Finally, the reviews. Uh, you may boost products based on the average review score. So the more reviews you have and the better the score of the review, the higher the product will be in the result sets. Next feature we're going to check right now is called the synonyms. Uh, synonyms are used to allow finding documents that does not include the exact word or exact phrase, but rather a synonym or an abbreviation or some kind of other way to represent this word, uh, this word or this phrase for this document. It is used well for regular synonyms, for abbreviations, uh, for suggestions. For example, you are looking uh, for the computer, but suggestion maybe the PC. Uh, the typos, so it allows you to make, uh, fix minor typos and minor mistakes here and there. For example, you have a, uh, the typical mistake for the computer, to write it as a computer, instead, so A instead of the E. Uh, and of course, the words that are the slang words or some other words that are not really used uh, in the description, but still have to be used to find the product, uh, find the appropriate products. How the synonyms are implemented. Uh, before we'll talk about implementation, I would just to uh, tell you how exactly Elasticsearch indexes data in order to explain how the synonyms are used. So when you work with the full text search in the Elasticsearch, uh, Elasticsearch uses two types of analyzers, search and index analyzers. We have already seen that two pairs when we are looking at uh, the configuration of the analyzers. So the first analyzer, the search analyzers, is used to uh, convert the search phrase into the internal structure. And the second analyzer, the index analyzer, is used to store, to convert to the internal structure the data you have in your database, so your actual data. And because you have only a small, usually have only a small phrase and you have tons of data in the database, it makes no sense to use the search analyzer to apply the synonyms. Because if you will not do that, you had to re-index all the data every time you're adding new synonyms. And of course, you don't want to do it. You want to keep your uh, index intact uh, in order to make your application more responsive and uh, have the better performance. Now we know that we have to use it for the search analyzer. Let us see what we can do or rather what we have to do here. Uh, Elasticsearch offers quite nice filter called synonyms graph. So if you want here, we have a reference to this uh, filter uh, in the Elasticsearch documentation. Uh, this filter here, you can see it here, is used to define the synonyms and used to apply the synonyms to the search. So every time you want to use it, you have to define this filter and you have to somehow use this filter in the search analyzer. In this case, I have used a special multiplexal filter in order to do not uh, have issues with the tokens. And I have applied this uh, filter in the full text search analyzer. So it will be applied only to the search phrase, but not to the search index. Later on, you have to refer the search index because you have to refresh the list of the uh, synonyms you want to have there all the time. And one more thing that you need to uh, be aware of is a direction of a replacement or direction of synonyms. Here you have two types of synonyms. You have bidirectional synonyms. So for example, if you're telling that A is synonym to B, it means that if you're looking for A, you may find B, and if you're looking for B, you may find A. Or you may have uh, unidirectional synonyms when if you're looking for A, you may find B, but if you're looking for B, you will not find A. Both of these uh, cases are supported out of the box. Uh, Elasticsearch uses solar, um, solar data format. 
here you go. Here you have description of how to use all these types of synonyms. Later on, I show you a couple of examples and explain how these synonyms work and how to use uh, this feature. Actually, let us do it. So first of all, let us see two types of synonyms we have here, bidirectional and unidirectional synonyms. I have prepared a couple of examples, so it will be a little bit easier to show it to you. So here in the synonyms management, first synonym we'd like to uh, check is the synonym for the table and the desk word. So table and desk are technically synonyms. And if we will search for the table word now, we will see not only tables, but we will see also a desks. Here you go, reception desk, an office desk, some kind of manager's desk, chair, etc. Pay attention, application shows the tables first and only desks because the user is looking for a table. So exact match boost is working here, as you can see. And if we will, and here we have 15 records. And if we will search for the desk world, we will also see 15 records. These are the same records, but the products that have word desk are. Now we have the opposite uh, situation. Now the products that have desk word in uh, the description or the title will be at the top. And then we see uh, the products that have the table in the description or in the title. Next type of synonyms I would like to, to show it to you is the directional synonyms. So diod and led. So a LED, uh, diode is like a, one of the way how you can call LED, but not all LEDs are diodes. That's why here we have uh, this kind of synonym only in this direction. So application will convert diode to LED, but it will not convert LED to diode. So let me show it to you. First of all, we have a LED products. We have uh, some kind of uh, handheld spotlights. We have LED bulbs, etc. But if I'll put here a word diode, application will show exactly 12 results, all the results, uh, but it will not work vice versa. If I would put here a LED word, it will not show me the products that include uh, the LED product. What else we can do? Uh, we can use abbreviations. This is a pretty typical thing that most of the customers facing either in the very beginning or at the first uh, stage of the implementation of their search engine. And uh, abbreviation allows you, uh, allow customer to use a shorter uh, form of the world in order to find this world. I have here a couple. Here we have the medical tag. A medical tag abbreviation for it is MT. So first of all, let me use the original phrase, medical tag. As you can see, we have one, two, three products found. And now I can do the same thing with the MT. So I can enter here MT and I see the same medical tags, although none of neither, uh, descriptions of neither of these products include this MT. And the similar thing you can do with the word shortenings. Word shortenings allows you to use a short form of the word in order to, well, find the appropriate products. The typical thing I'm, I'm facing from time to time is the shortening for the color. For example, for the black color, it can be shortened as BLC or BLK. Well, let us see if it works. Here we have the uh, products that includes word black. 17 products. Now we can put here BLC and we can see the same 17 products or BLK that include the same 17 products. So BLC, synonym to BLK, synonym to the word black. Uh, this is how we configure it our synonyms. Next feature we're going to talk about is the error tolerance. So error tolerance is the common way to improve user experience and allow user to find the products by entering the search phrases with the mistakes or with the typos and still will be able to find the, what he is looking uh, for. Pay attention that error, error tolerance is not an autocorrection. So autocorrection is the feature that shows you the uh, phrase, perhaps you were looking for that one. This is autocorrection. Error tolerance simply show you all the products uh, that include uh, the word, even if this word has a typo. 
So how it works? Under the bonnet, application uses so-called fuzzy matching. So fuzzy matching is the feature of the Elasticsearch that allows you to ignore or tolerate some errors. You may tolerate up to two errors in uh, one word. Application uses this uh, Levenstein distance formula to calculate whether we have one or two words. If you're interested in it, you can always check the implementation and see how this thing is working. So here we have the fuzziness parameter responsible for that. Uh, then we are requiring for the first letter to be always correct. Otherwise, we will have too many false positive results and the result will be a bit messy and we don't want to do it. Obviously, we want to have better user experience, not the worst user experience. Uh, in many cases, uh, it is also a good idea to have a minimum word length. Minimum word length basically tells you that um, the fuzzy search or a row tolerance search will work starting only from words that have four characters, five characters, or some kind of limit. And then we also have a possibility to have an exclusion pattern. This one is usually used uh, if you want to not enable uh, error tolerant for the identifiers, like for example, product SKU, because if you have lots of the similar SKUs, obviously you don't want to show the users all this SKU, you don't want to uh, show him exact SKU, not the products with the similar SKU. So let us see how this thing works and what we can configure in the system configuration for the error tolerance. So first typical case is typos. So let's assume that we want to search for some kind of light products. And now, first of all, I want to demonstrate you how it works when you're entering the correct uh, spelling, light. And now I'm going to intentionally make a typo, L-I-G-T-T. -T. So here, instead of the H, I'm putting T. And Cecil, you can see quite a lot of products. You can see 33 products that does not have word league TT, so they have word light. And here we're tolerating one error. In system configuration, we may tell that we want to tolerate more than one error. Here you go in the synonyms section, oh, sorry, in the fuzzy search section. You may tell how many errors you want to tolerate. Here you may tell how many exactly. You may uh, this uh, minimum number is three. And uh, here we may tell how many errors we can tolerate, one, two, or request based. So here we can tell we can tell going to tolerate one or two errors. And the tolerance will start from four characters, three characters, five characters, and so on. The final feature is the tolerance exclusion allows you to ignore or tolerant if the phrase match some kind of pattern. For example, this pattern is for my SKUs. And if I will put the SKU for this product here, I will find the appropriate product, of course. But if I will make a typo here, it will not be found. If I will though disable this uh, tolerance exclusion, which means application will use tolerance even for the SKUs. As you can see, I can find the product if even if I make the uh, typo in the product SKU. And now let us talk finally about the customization. What kind of things you can customize in the application, how you can customize them and so on. The customization uh, itself uh, may um, cover the index data, index structure, mapping, settings, and many other areas. And it can may also cover uh, the PHP implementation or implementation on the code level that is like on the higher level comparing to the search index, but still interacts with it in one way or the other. So the first type of the customization or first level of the customization is the data level. So data level is used to, data level customizations are used in two cases. The first case, if you want to add new data to the search index, well, or remove it from the search index, of course. Uh, if you want to add it, you can add new field uh, and you can add either, you can add this field either as a separate field or you can add this information to the global search text field, which is used for the global search, both in the management console and in the store. 
then you can also use events. Uh, events are used to modify data before the reindexation, uh, during the reindexation, before the passing of them to the search index. So let's assume that out of the box or application puts quite a lot of the information about the products to the search index, but you know for sure that you, need, you don't need this information. What you can do, you can add a listener to one of these events and simply remove all the information from the data. This way you may save some uh, space in the uh, search index uh, instance, and you can also decrease the load on the search index, improving overall experience. The second type of the customization, second common type of the customization is the customization on the query, query level. Uh, when you are working with the Aura Commerce, uh, you should know that if you want to interact with the search index, you have to use a query abstraction. Query abstraction is well an object that encapsulates a query similar to the SQL. And the first type of the customization here, the request builder's customization is responsible for the conversion of this query to the elastic search query. So or query to elastic search query. These request builders, here they are. They are available as separate services and developers may customize them when they need to. For example, they may decorate them or they even create a completely new services if it is needed. The second type, how uh, it can be customized on the query level, is a customization through the events. We have a before search event, both in the standard and uh, in the uh, before search, uh, both in the standard and in the website uh, indices. And in this case, you can add additional conditions to the event, right? for example, additional sorting to this event and affect the uh, way query work, works on that level. So pay attention that uh, if you want to customize something on the low level, you have to use request builders. If you want to customize something on the higher level, you have to use the events like before search. Event. And finally, a couple of useful links related to the documentation if you need information about the search index architecture. We have a pretty good information here. This article includes uh, information about index structure, both for the um, backend and storefront indexes. It includes information about implementation for the ORM and the Elasticsearch. Then we have an article on fine tuning of the Elasticsearch index, specifically, for example, how to implement your own filters and the analyzers. And of course, you can always refer to the Elasticsearch documentation. Elasticsearch has a really good guide on uh, all the features like filters, sorter segregations uh, that you can use in the OR as well. And if you are not able to find the answer to a question there, you can always ask it in the forum. Elasticsearch has a pretty good community when almost all questions uh, can be answered in well, pretty soon. And guys, that's all I want to talk to with you today about. Uh, if you have some questions, if you have, uh, if you want to discuss something, or if you want to, well, uh, ask me some questions in order to, well, explain you how it works and why it works this way, uh, feel free to do it. So let me quickly check the list of the questions if we have them. Okay, uh, so here we have three questions. Uh, so the first one from the Leon Walker, is there a reason why Aura uses the boost value only with the product global search query for the old text? That's a good question. Uh, technically, Aura uh, uses it not only for the old text, uh, technically it uses it in uh, more than one case. Uh, it uses it for every, uh, uses different types of boost for different types of queries. So let me quickly show you implementation and to explain how it's working and what is going on there. So let us check the boost by the exact match, for example. So boost by the exact match works pretty much all the time. So every time you are applying, so applying uh, contained search or full text search, application automatically adds a 
boost part to it, boost in this case uh, by the exact match, no matter if it's all text, name, SQ, or any other phrase. However, other features like, for example, boost by entity name and boost by the product at attributes indeed work only when if you are looking uh, in the old text field, for example, here. Or, uh, is it? Yeah, I think this is here as well. Yeah, this is it. And in these cases, it is done intentionally uh, because these two specific cases, boost by the title and boost by the product attributes, make sense only for the global search. By global search, I mean search by the old text attributes uh, because this is the primary use case for looking. So when you have a global search, you may boost by the product uh, SKU and product name. But if you are, let's say, looking for something in the keywords, boosting by the SQ or by the name may not make any sense because you are not performing global search, you are searching in one specific field, not everywhere. Uh, then we have a question from Yevhen Sirnielnik. Could you please share presentation afterwards? Yes, the presentation will be sent to all the participants uh, of this presentation as a separate email. And I can also uh, share it in the slide share. So there you will be able also to find it just by the name advanced search with Elasticsearch. Uh, then we have a question from the Lian work. I'm not able to find names in the back office in the Oracle Commerce 